Hello everybody and welcome to the 6th episode of the Your Welcome Podcast. I'm your host, Hardy Malhotra, and I'm back with you guys with another podcast. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Your Welcome Podcast, as I have none other than Caitlin, not the former Davis champion, but she runs a Facebook page uh, on Facebook, obviously, um, about the WWE tour that will be coming in a couple of, uh, in 20 odd days. And, uh, she lets us know of who's gonna be doing the signings, uh, what superstars are gonna be coming on the actual main show, um, uh, you know, stuff like that. And, she, uh, I'm, you, if you go over to Facebook and, uh, um, you type in WWE uh, Australian Tour 2013, uh, the one with nearly 2,000 likes or with the most likes on it. Um, definitely go like on there and you'll be part of Team Tour. And um, yeah, so um, I'll be taking you guys to an interview in a little bit. Um, but first, uh, I've got a Raw review for you guys. So uh, Raw kicked off with Alberto Del Rio, the new World Heavyweight Champion. And uh, he's pretty much a heel uh, now, I think he is. But um, uh, they he's just talking about how he feels disrespected by the fans, stuff like that. And uh, it was a pretty boring segment, but um, like until something which I'll get later on to. Um, but um, yeah, he's just talking about that. And then uh, he's like, I'm the best. And then I was like, no, you're not. <laughs> and then... Sam Punk comes out and he's like, "You're not the best. I'm the best in the world." As um, he beat um, Chris Jericho at Payback, so um, yeah, he's fully like, um, "I'm the best." And then he's like, "You know what? I'm gonna verse you tonight. I want to verse you tonight." Um, Alberto and his, Alberto's like, "Oh, nah, it's all right. You're making a big mistake." Blah blah blah. And then the, um, he's like, no, I'll, no, Punk's like, no, you're going to fight me tonight. And then the crowd's like, see, 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 see. And as soon as the Boda Dario is about to say something, um, the managing supervisor of Monday Night Raw, Vicky Guerrero, comes out and she says, oh, that's a great idea. And she makes the match for the main event of Raw. So, um, yeah, that was a pretty good segment. Um, then, uh, so that's pretty much our... Uh, main event for tonight, uh, straight away at the start of Raw, so it was a great start to Raw, and then um, then we have a backstage segment between Paul Heyman and Sam Punk, and Sam Punk saying that um, I don't want him, I don't want you, Punk saying to Heyman that he doesn't want him to be at ringside anymore, he's like, um, he's, he's not Brock Lesnar, he's not Curtis Axel, he's not Paul Heyman's client anymore, and he says that um, from here, um, he doesn't want to be with Paul Heyman, he said he'll be his friend, and he'll always be a Paul Heyman guy, and then Sam Punk leaves, and then uh, we have a jobber entrance for <laughs> Wade Barrett, as uh, he was about to verse Curtis Axel for the Intercontinental Championship, but um, Vicky Guerrero comes out and says uh, she's going to be, uh, he's going to be versing his, Vicky Guerrero's big surprise, and it was none other then Christian, so uh, it's been a while since we've seen Christian, and it looks awesome in the ring, uh, so great job to Christian and Ray Barrett tonight, great match uh, they put on, and uh, Christian came away with a victory with the um, kill switch, so it was a great match, just uh, first match of the night, which started raw, uh, then we have uh, a Wyatt family promo, it looked great, um, I can't wait till these guys debut, so um, yeah, then we had a uh, uh, what did we have? Oh yeah, then we had our two on one handicap match: Team Rod Scholars versus Sheamus. Um, and uh, this was also an okay match. It was not the best match uh, on the night, but um, Team Rod Scholars came away with the victory, and then Sheamus bro kicked um, Cody Rhodes after the match. And uh, well, while um, Damon Sander left the ring, uh, then. Uh, uh, what happens after that? Oh yeah, then <laughs> Vicky Guerrero has a segment with uh, Triple H, and uh, he keeps mentioning uh, how Vicky Guerrero is doing kind of a bad job, but then uh, he ends up with a kind of a little bit of positive and says, "Ah, uh, to take care of the Shield tonight, no matter what it takes." So um, yeah. Uh, then we have a Kane and Daniel Bryan segment, uh, where Kane um is pretty much you know saying, "Oh, you know." 
stuff like I can't remember what he was saying exactly, but um, he was like, and then Brian fully cracks it at him and says, "Oh, you know what? Because I'm the weak link, aren't I?" Or something. Like that. I can't really remember. But um, <laughs> then uh, they promote the WWE app as usual. But um, I'm okay with it in a way. But um, anyway, they say um. <laughs> That Daniel Bryan and uh, Randy Orton are going to have a match tonight and go on the WWE uh, app to vote for it. And I think it was a no DQ match, uh, two out of three falls, and a no count out match. So, um, yeah. They um, finally decided what it was, and it was a no disqualification match. And, um, yeah, it was a great match. Randy Orton and um, Daniel Bryan put on a great match. And uh, unfortunately, Daniel Bryan got injured during the match, and I think he really hit his head hard when he hit that missile drop kick. But then, Daniel Bryan's a fighter, and he kept going. And uh, yeah, so congratulations um, to Randy Orton for winning the match. But Daniel Bryan put his life on the line, and he had a great match. And I think he's injured. And uh, yeah, so Randy Orton wins by just why the ref stopping stopping the match. So um. So it was really weird, but um, I think it was a concussion by um, Daniel Bryan. Uh, then we have uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, a great Divas segment uh, between Stephanie McMahon and um, AJ, and uh, <laughs> AJ called Stephanie McMahon boss lady. It was kind of funny, and um, Stephanie AJ got into um. <laughs> Under Stephen McMahon's uh, skin, and said, uh, uh, she said, instead of dating superstars, that uh, she should maybe marry one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was kind of getting under her skin. And um, and uh, Stephen McMahon saying that there's going to be a whole lot of um, divas uh, on the roster that want that divas title. And then Caitlyn comes out, and um, and. Um, <laughs> AJ's about to um, um, get AJ, and then AJ he runs out of the ring, and uh, Caitlyn has a little nip slip, <laughs> so that was kind of weird. Um, and then we came away with uh, another a rematch from Payback. Uh, Dean Ambrose of The Shield versus Kane. This match was awesome. Um, so uh, it wasn't awesome. It was great. It was pretty good. I'll give it a three out of five stars. Uh, but Dean Ambrose came away with victory as um, the Shield came out and uh, Roman Reigns speed. Uh, who was it? Kane, and they triple powered bombed them. So um, yeah, and then uh, so what happened after that? Oh yeah, the Shield come away uh, as a backstage segment with uh, Vicky Guerrero, and um, <laughs> this was pretty funny. Uh, Dean Ambrose was like, "What are you gonna do? Spank me?" Because um, they were like oh, um, getting in trouble or something like that. And then Miss McMahon, um, she, uh, Vin, uh, what was it? Vicky Guerrero was about to say, you're. And then Miss McMahon comes out and uh, shakes both of, all of their hands as shields. And um, they just left because Miss McMahon was being nice or something. I can't really remember. <laughs> then this was my highlight of the night. Not the highlight, but it was a great uh, highlight for me. Uh, Mr. Zeb Coulter comes out and he says um, that he's got a new client and stuff like that. And um, he says he can speak five five languages, the most one important being English. And I just marked out because I knew who it was. It was none other than Antonio Cesaro. And I was like marking out right there because I knew Antonio Cesaro needed a push. And I think Zeb Coulter is going to take... Um, Antonio Cesaro, so, um, and Cesaro's like, we, the people, so, uh, he versed, uh, William Regal, this was a good match, um, I think it was good to see, it was good to see, um, William Regal, and it was a good solid match, so, uh, Antonio Cesaro came away with the victory as, uh, he won with the neutralizer, and then, uh, Sam, uh, not Sam Punk, John Cena comes out and does a pretty boring promo, and he's just talking about money in the bank, and then Mark Henry comes out to talk about his retirement and stuff like that. And he thanks um, everyone and stuff like this. And uh, he says, thank everyone. The crowd's fully into it and saying, thank you, Henry. And uh, sexual chocolate chance, everything was going off until um, 
and he mentioned Mark Henry mentioned his family. It was a great promo by Mark Henry, Oscar winning. And um, as soon as uh, he's like, I've uh, as soon as um, Mark Henry and John Cena hug, uh, Henry it's the world's strongest slam. So that was awesome. And he's like, I got a lot. I got. I got a lot left in the tank. It ain't that easy. It's like, and it's like, that's what I do. So that was awesome. And then uh, we had a pretty jobber match between Chris Jericho and Heath Slater. This match was alright. And uh, Chris Jericho won with a code breaker, so it was okay. Um, then we had, uh, what did we have? Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, the Intercontinental Champion, Curtis Axel versus Sin Cara. This match was a great match. And Miz was on commentary for this match. So, um, yeah, it was a good match, and Curtis Axel came away with a victory with this awesome um, DDT. So, um, yeah. Then we have a Triple H, Vince McMahon, uh, Stephen McMahon, and Vicky Guerrero segment, and he's pretty much saying, you know, stuff like, uh, like why didn't you take care of the Shield, blah, blah, blah. And then Stephen is like, you know what, don't care about both of them. You can uh, trust me. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Uh, then we have the main event, finally for Raw. CM Punk vs. Uh, Alberto Del Rio. This match was a great match. Um, it was great. Um, I think one of their better matches. So, um, yeah. Um, it, <laughs> the ending came was when uh, uh, hits the GTS. Uh, CM Punk hits the GTS. And then um, Del Rio slu- like, he gets out of the ring. And then uh, Dolph Ziggler attacks him. Uh, Del Rio. And then Punk's like, oh, raise my hand. And then we just hear, Brock Lesnar comes out. And then Brock Lesnar gets the mic and he's just about to speak. And then Brock Lesnar hits the F5 to Sam Punk. That was awesome. That was a mark out moment for me right there. So uh, pretty good Raw f- uh, for this week. Um, I'd rate it a 7 out of 10. Great work, WWE. You're finally um, doing some good shows. So, um, yeah. So now we'll go to a quick commercial break, um, and uh, as in, uh, we'll listen to a theme song. So uh, today's theme song will be none other than um, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Wade Barrett's new theme song. So um, yeah, it's a nice quick theme song. So um, then we'll get to uh, my interview with Caitlin from WWE Australia 2013 tour. So. Here we go. Wade Barrett's theme song. So that was his theme right there, guys. <laughs> I couldn't really um, think of a good theme song for today, but um, wait, wait, same. It's okay. It's all right, same. Um, so now, guys, I'm going to be taking you guys to uh, my uh, interview with Caitlin. So um, hope you guys enjoy it, and uh, yeah, I'll get back to you once. Uh, I'll let you know who's on next uh, episode of the Your Welcome podcast after the, our interview. So here we go. Hello everybody and welcome to the 6th episode of the You're Welcome podcast and I'm here with a very big guest, her name is Caitlin, she is not the wrestler but um, she runs the team tour page on Facebook and um, I'm very glad to have her on the show, so welcome Caitlin. Thank you for having me, So um, I'll, nice <laughs> so I'll be giving you some questions um, related to wrestling and um, some about the team tour page. 
Alright, so um, the first question is, how did you get into wrestling? How did I get? Um, I got into wrestling, uh, it's kind of been the whole time I've grown up, I've been in wrestling. Um, my pop and my mum used to watch it when she was little. She used to watch it when she was pregnant with me. And then in primary school I had a friend who watched it. But it really has been until I was just before I turned 13 that I started watching it. So I'm 22 now. Yep. And then I've been to it pretty much every show. Awesome. Alright, um, my second question is, who was your favourite um, superstar when you started watching? Um, when I first started watching, I remember watching in the times when it was Stone Cold, The Rock, Mankind. Um, but when I started watching and continue to watch until today... Um, my first match that I turned on the TV to was John Cena and Big Show when they were gearing up for the Great American Bash for the United States Championship. So that was that was my love of John Cena at the time when I was 12 years old. <laughs> cool. And um, this is a no-brainer question, but um, do you still watch it now? I don't watch it. I don't actually like wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course I do. Yeah. All right. Um... Yeah. Who would you say is your favourite wrestler of all time? Um, of all time, I would have to say Mick Foley, especially after meeting him when he came to the Australian tour. He was just so lovely. And I think I speak for a lot of fans out there that we wish we had that era of wrestling back yep. instead of the PG era. So, oh yeah, Mick Foley is definitely a favourite. Cool, cool. Um, and, uh, as I mentioned in the intro, you have a Team Tool page on Facebook. Um, I do, I do. Yeah. How'd, you come, like to about it. how'd you come up with it? Um, I came up with it in, it was just before the 2011 tour, I believe it was, and a friend of mine in Adelaide actually had started a page to try and get fans together, and he said, would you like to help me and co-manage it? So we did, and then the next year I took on Soul Work because he no longer wanted to do it, and this is our fourth, third or fourth year, I think, and we've got the biggest amount of followers we've ever had. We've got 1,345 followers at last check, so it's getting pretty big and it's pretty exciting because last tour fans were actually recognising me, which was pretty awesome. That's awesome, that's so awesome. It was good. Cool, cool. Um, how many WWE shows have you been to in Australia? Um, in Australia I have been to, I believe, I think this year will be my 13th, 14th and 15th show as I'm attending my uh, Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane shows. Yep. So quite a few, especially because my first show was only in 2004. Yep which was the Return of the Dead Man tour. So my first tour, I got to see people like Eddie Guerrero and The Undertaker. Uh, it was pretty exciting. All right. Um, what was the best one out of those 14 or 15? <sighs> I want to say that it was a tour I went to, I think it was 2007, but it could have been 2008. Um, it was at Rod Laver Arena. And they had Edge and John Cena in a cage match, which was pretty cool because they also had Leader at ringside. Yep. But they also had DX, which was awesome. Cool, cool. Um, another question I have is, uh, do you watch TNA? I don't watch TNA. <laughs> yeah. um, my reason for that being is because when they came, when they said they were announcing the show into her, I automatically went, yeah, I'm going, because I did watch it. Yeah. And then a month before, they cancelled. And I lost out on hotel fares, um, air fares. So I was out of pocket, almost a grand. Yeah. So it kind of put me off a bit. But I do follow the reports online, but I just don't watch it on TV. Yep, that's fair enough, I guess. Yeah, and especially because you're watching, come on, we all got to admit, we're pretty much watching old WWE wrestlers, so... Yeah. Come on. Yeah, all right, well... back in them, they're very, very talented, but yeah, I just don't tend to watch them. Yep. Um, yep. Another question I have is, um, have you met any wrestlers? 
Um, I think a shorter question would be, who haven't I met? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've met quite a few. If you reeled off a few, I've probably met them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there anyone in particular wanting to know? Have Just I met anyone, met? really. Okay. Um, recently, mm-hmm. I've met John Cena. I've met Dolph Ziggler. I've met The Miz. I haven't met CM Punk, and for anyone who's listening that's a team tour follower, we all know that he's so hard to get a photo with. Yep. Um, I've met Beth Phoenix, um, Jeff Hardy. I have a photo with Triple H, yep. which is pretty cool. Yeah, there's quite a few. Cool. Quite a few. Cool. And my last question is, do you have any social networking plugs? <laughs> social networking plugs. Um... Anyone listening that isn't already a team tour member that is maybe going to the shows in Australia in July or just loves wrestling and isn't attending, go to Facebook and search for WWE Australian World Tour 2013 and click like because you'll become a team tour member. And we're a pretty awesome group. We're getting pretty big. Yep, I I must admit I am a team tour member myself. Good job. (laughs) That's lovely to hear. Alright, so um, thanks for uh, this interview, Caitlin. It was really good. Thank you for having me. So, yeah, so thanks for watching, everyone, um, and listening, sorry, I mean. But, um, yeah, so thanks, everyone, for listening, and I'll see you guys for Episode 7. Peace out. So that was my interview with Caitlin, guys. So um, hope you guys enjoyed and listened uh, to the uh, podcast, so, oh, uh, to the actual interview. So um, make sure you guys go on Facebook and uh, go over and like the page. I'll definitely leave it in the description box down below. Um, so yeah, you guys can like it. And uh, so next episode, I'll be, uh, for next episode, episode 7, I'll be having none other than Andre Corbeil. Uh It's a pretty long interview, guys. Um, I've already recorded it. Uh, it's a pretty long interview, so um, uh, stay tuned for that uh, next week, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, so thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys for Episode 7. Peace out.